Hi, I'm here with uh, Russell Howcroft, Executive General Manager of Network 10, and many would know you as the panelist on the Gruen Transfer. So question to, to start. We talk uh, a lot here about challenging the status quo, uh, failing intelligently. If you're going to fail, fail quickly. Um, and if we build things that, that our uh, customers value, there's no doubt success will be inevitable. Can you talk a little bit about how you think about failing and how that comes out in your book? Well, I, uh, the book talks about this idea of owning failure. And um, I just think it's about actually the individual really is where I come from on this. It's not so much the corporate, but the individual saying, you know what, I got that wrong and let's all get together and work out you know, how, how the hell I got it wrong. Um, and clearly, it's about not doing it again, you know. Right. But not being not being afraid. I think I think a lot of business, um, a lot of business culture is around fear, um, and we don't necessarily treat each other in an adult to adult fashion. You know, it can be very much parent to child in some cases. At times. Yeah, at times. Yeah, and and of course that doesn't create an atmosphere where people feel comfortable owning failure. You know, they're going to try hard to avoid the tough conversations or avoid even having any conversation at all. Right. Yeah, because they'll get labelled as the person, you know, or they failed on that one. And by, by being labelled, they're then concerned about their career. So we should go the other way with these things and just have a, have a culture which says, you know, this went wrong, why did it go wrong? I mean, in the, old, in the ad game, maybe the stakes aren't quite as high as they are in banking, you know. Failure in banking can cost quite a lot of money, I get that. Uh, but equally, failure in advertising might cost you a client. So, you know, it's, it's about just making sure that people know that it's okay to fail. What do you think, so we talk about failing, what do you think take ourselves less seriously? What advice, a couple pieces of advice would you give? Well, don't say no too quickly. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the most powerful word in business is no. Yeah, because once it's said, then that's it, it's all over. So I think what happens a lot of the time is we'll, get, we'll be presented with an idea or you know, with a notion or a new strategy. And if it's slightly scary or if it's slightly out of the box or it's new, we really, really get to know way too quickly. So all I would suggest is, um, it's not about saying yes all the time, it's about saying, why do you think that's a good idea? Uh, maybe it is a good idea, let's talk about it a little more and convince me, persuade me. Yeah, no, just get rid of no, and I reckon we'd be a long way down the track. Social media, so it is a big hubbub, um, Twitter, Facebook, how do you think of that from yeah. a marketing sense? Do you find, do you think it's valid? Do you think there's opportunity there? Yeah. Do you think yeah. it's overblown? I think, we, I think we have to take great care. Uh, I think if you're, if you're a marketer now, the, the big issue that you're faced with is where do I put my money? Yeah. So what is the right investment bucket for my, my pool of funds? And I, I think that what's happened is that there's been an over-index into digital. It doesn't mean I don't think it's important. It, it is important and it absolutely plays a role, but I think what's happened is that the digital world's done a brilliant job at selling the newness of digital, the measurement of digital, the one-to-one -one capability of digital, and the broadcast traditional world has done a terrible job at actually selling what it's capable of doing for businesses. So I do think there'll be a bit of a correction. Interesting, I know you worked in the UK, you know, in London or UK last year, free-to-air mainstream TV ad spend went up 7.6%. Really? Yeah, and, and it went up because the marketing community is starting to rem rem remember what works. Yeah. You know? What's your view around how just the landscape of, uh, of work is changing? Yeah, well, we're in exciting times um, because, of course, the, the fact that we're all carrying our office around in our pocket allows us to be flexible. These are all good things. Um, I'm not a huge believer in work-life balance. Um, I think that, you know, you should love your work. Yeah. You know, and you should just be into what you do. And, and if you've got to work 12 o'clock on a Sunday, um, work 12 o'clock on a Sunday. I mean, I, I've, I've always been of the view that, you know, work is your passion, it's, it's your life, um, and you've got to find a way to make everything fit. I understand that. But yeah, I, I think the tools today allow us to really be connected and work really hard, be highly effective, and that's a good thing.